Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to implement validation for the options pattern to ensure that your application always receives the correct configuration values. In my last video, we explored the options pattern in .NET, covering what it is and how you can use it to efficiently manage your configuration settings. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend watching that first because today, we're going to build on that foundation. I'll include the link in the description below. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated on .NET tutorials. So let's get started. In the app settings.json file, we've defined a section called email settings, which contains two fields, SMTP server and port. We've also created an options class named email settings. This class has two properties, SMTP server and port, which correspond to the same names in the app settings.json file. The options class needs to be non-abstract and have public read-write properties. These properties should match the names and types of the corresponding items in the configuration to ensure they are properly bound. Let's run the application and check if everything is working as expected before we implement the validation. Open .http file and hit send request. You can see from the response that the configuration values are correctly set. Let's see what happens when we provide incorrect configuration values. I'll set zero for the port and an empty string for SMTP server. Let's run the application again. Hit the send request. You can see that the response reflects the incorrect configuration values we set in the app settings.json file. An empty string for SMTP server and zero for the port. Here's the issue. The application runs without any errors, even when the configuration values are set incorrectly. We don't realize there's an issue until we actually run the application. That's where validation come in. We can introduce validation for the email settings class by using data annotations. These annotations let you define validation rules directly within the class. Here I can say that the SMTP server property is required and the port property is a range with a value that must be between 1 and 600. To get the validation working, we need to enable it in the program.cs file. I need to make a small change here, so I'll comment out this code. Builder services add options, and we specify our email settings class. Now I need to specify how to bind my email settings. By specifying the email settings section in the app settings file. Here I used the bind method, but we can use the bind configuration method by passing the email settings section name. And now, I call the validate data annotations method. This will check the data annotations on my email settings class and ensure everything is in order. Let's check the application settings again. It looks like we still have some incorrect values. Let's run the application. Hit send request. We're now getting an options validation exception. When we check the error message, it shows that the SMTP server field is required and the port must be between 1 and 600. So it's clear that our validation is working correctly. But there's a problem with this approach. This validation only runs when we hit our endpoint, meaning it happens at runtime. So, if there are incorrect values in the application settings, we won't be aware of them until we inject the email settings options. Fortunately, there's a way to run validation at startup. There's a method called validate on start. This method validates the options the first time a email settings options instance is created. This means the email settings are validated at application startup not at runtime. Let's run the application again. You can see that we get an options validation exception at application startup. This means our validation on the email settings is now running when the application starts. You can also see the error messages for the SMTP server and the port, which must be between 1 and 600. If you need more complex validations, you can call the validate method. This method allows you to specify your custom validation function. You get the email settings instance and can perform any validation you like. Just return a Boolean value indicating whether the validation was successful or not. Here I'm going to define a custom validation. If the port is less than 10, we'll fail the validation and return false. Otherwise, we'll return true, indicating the validation was successful. We can provide a failure message for this validation if it fails. I will provide a failure message stating that the port is less than 10. Let's set the port to 5 
and assign a value to the SMTP server in the application settings file to check if the custom validation works. Let's run the application. You can see that we get an options validation exception and error message is poured as less than 10. This means our custom validation on the email settings is validated at application startup and is working correctly. Let's check whether the application runs perfectly when we provide correct values. I set the port to 587 in the app settings file and run the application. Now we are not getting any errors at the application startup. Run the endpoint by hitting send request. You can see we're getting the correct email settings values in the response. So that means our validations are working correctly when we provide the correct configuration values. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video on adding validation to the options pattern. Don't forget to check out my previous video about the options pattern, which you can see on the screen now. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to help. Until next time, happy coding!